One thing about this part of Tasmania, it's kind of what people expected to see when they come to Tasmania. The wildness, the, the fresh air, and it's got all that, you know, in spades. I like that we're remote, kind of adds to the feeling, I think. Lots of places we visit around here, you've got no service. You get, really have an opportunity to connect. The coastline changes quite dramatically as you come out of Burnie. It becomes really rugged between here and uh, right along to the end, to the edge of the world. We're at Marawar on the west coast of Tasmania. We're on the top of the west coast. We're about 15 kilometres north of the Arthur River where the landmark, the edge of the world is. The Arthur River is really popular these days with shack owners, quad bike drivers, fishermen. It's a very popular area for people to want to get out in their vehicles and explore the west coast. We're not far from Cape Grim, which is the northwest tip of Tasmania, where the world's cleanest air is recorded. We have a couple of places on the northwest here, particularly at Woolnorth, that have been dual named. So Cape Grim is actually called Kennaook. It kind of expands your experience when you're on the coast if you have a bit of understanding about what happened here previously. We are also in one of Tasmania's most richest Aboriginal heritage areas. This area was originally called Tybalucca by the Parappa, who were the original custodians of Marawar. The coastline of the northwest is culturally rich. We have nine tribes that lived in this region, all the way from Table Cape to the mouth of the Pyman River. There are a lot of things on this coast, be it petroglyphs, hut site depressions, middens, all through this coastline. It's really important from a cultural perspective, maybe you take some time, learn a little bit about where you're going to go, the things you might see and the stories that are actually associated with that country. The Turkine Drive now has been up and running for about five or six years. It's been a big success to this area. The Trawada Arch, which has probably become one of the biggest features these days, and rightly so, it's got a beautiful rainforest, a really good, classic, cool temperate rainforest, which is what the Tarkine is really famous for. It is where Australia's largest piece of continued cool temperate rainforest still exists. The Tarkine has, you know, the Tasmanian Devil, the Spotted Tail Quail, the Wedge Tail Eagle, and the White Goshawk. So four animals that are on the threatened and endangered species list ex exist in the Tarkine. It does have a forestry history, it does have a mining history, certainly has a shack and human history in the later times, but it also has a huge Aboriginal history, which is where the name the Tarkine comes from. Smithton in the early days was predominantly known for the timber industry. It's now kind of expanded into Cape Grim beef, dairy and fishing, expanded into abalone and oysters. This is all grass fed beef country, so they don't eat any grain. It's all simply the grass, the hay, the silage that's grown in the area. All the tribes of the Northwest used to actually venture to Robins Island, which is just off the coast of here. So that certain times of the year when certain signs would appear, so such as the Blackwood would flower, they would begin their journey to Robins Island and that's where they would all gather to perform ceremony, to share in trade, marriage. Rocky Cape was turned into a national park due to the Aboriginal cultural heritage values there, as well as being a place of cultural significance. But Rocky Cape was a home to a, an Aboriginal tribe of people that live there, so they're the Lorina people. The caves, you can still view the caves, so it's totally worth a look. And I love that you've got the beach, you can drive 15 minutes, you're in the bush. A lot of people don't realise Stanley is on a peninsula about seven kilometres out to sea. So it is this beautiful, rugged, windswept, gorgeous place nestled under a volcanic plug, which you can see behind us called the Nut. Stanley is a historic town established in the early 1800s as part of the Van Diemen's Land Company land holding. It is a cluster of these beautiful little cottages that back onto the Nut. It's historic, gorgeous, the nut is iconic. You see it from all across the region. There's a lot of wildlife up the top. There's lots of little potteroos, wallabies, bird life. There's a whole mutton bird colony up there, penguin colony around the bottom. The 
there's a lot of fishing industry in Stanley. We've got Hersey Seafoods, Top Fish, and a variety of fishing companies that trade out of Stanley. So there's a big fishing fleet that you'll see at the old port and they bring their produce straight into Stanley. On the hill above Stanley is Highfield Historic Site, which is a museum that has been done up for people to go through and the stories through there are incredible about the local region and the 1820s history between the settlers, the Aboriginals and the views from there are absolutely breathtaking as well. Table Cape is a volcanic plug, a really rich agricultural area. Any day, any month, you can look out of the window and it's a kaleidoscope of colour and constantly changing. So in April you'll see all the poppies. So 80% of the poppies that are used worldwide by the pharmaceutical industry are grown on the northwest coast. Probably three or four degrees warmer up here than it is in the south of Tasmania, which probably is what makes it so amazing for growing. Because we've got that rich basalt soil up here, so you can grow anything, it's a lot greener and the light is actually a little bit different. So when the sun comes up, there's a different glow to it and when the sun goes down, you'll see some of the most amazing sunsets. And then come towards September, October, everything then bursts into life with tulips all along the northwest coast. The tulip farm being the famous spot for the people to go and visit and they get 48,000 visitors a year and it's acres and acres under the lighthouse with the lighthouse as a backdrop of just carpets of tulips in different colours. It's just beautiful. The lighthouse is definitely worth a visit. It's been beautifully restored. It still operates today. Five minutes from here is Boat Harbour Beach and that's a beautiful fine white sand that would not look out of place in a Caribbean movie. And you've got Sisters Beach a little bit further along. Wynyard is a really bustling little town, always busy. There's lots of independent little shops. So there's shoe shops, bookshops, restaurants, lots of cafes. Uh, the English River in, and the inlet from the sea is, comes into Gutteridge Gardens. There are some beautiful walks along the English River, which you can then follow round in front of the New Yacht Club. The award-winning wonders of Wynyard. That's our visitor centre, but it's a visitor centre with a difference. So they've got a vintage car collection that's on show. Burnley's a very exciting place to live and to visit. We've got our working port, which is the busiest port in Tasmania, and the CBD is literally on the edge of the beach and we face north. There are not many north facing cities in Australia where the CBD is integrated into the beach area. Over the years, Burnie's changed a, a lot from a very blue collar town with the industrial work that happened here in the, uh, from the 40s through to about 2000. You can come here from Launceston in a bit over 90 minutes. You can go down to Cradle Mountain in a bit over an hour. There are lots of exciting places to come and visit in Burnie. Major tourist attractions like our rhododendron gardens, which are about 15 minutes drive south of the city. They're the largest rhododendron gardens in the Southern Hemisphere. They're renowned worldwide. The mayor or the deputy mayor meet every cruise ship that comes into Burnie and we're in the top three or five destinations around Australia for cruise ship passenger satisfaction. The penguins here, they're all along the coast and they're only very little penguins, they're cute as anything. And you know, we've got them here in Burnie, in, obviously in Penguin down the coast, Cooey, uh, Wynyard, all the way through to places like Stanley. Burnie has a very strong art scene and music and theatre, visual arts as well. It's just like nowhere else in Tasmania. 